It's a fucking monkey that's a hitman. Yeah. You know, the thing I did actually kind of like about that uh, uh, comic book run is the fact that because of Deadpool's alignment or whatever, he was actually looking normal again. But he killed someone so Spider-Man wouldn't, and because of that, he became, well, his normal-looking self. And it's just like, yeah, I took uh, a hit for you. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Are we done the final lecture? It's interesting. Not yet, but we will eventually. We have a lot of videos to go through, huh? We'll eventually all get there. Eventually we'll get to the good stuff. I don't want to go over slow mish, mish, but we're probably going to have to at some point. No, we can't skip Slanesh, please. We can't, I'm sorry. We can. Okay, this is an episode I think you're going to like, though, Fable, because it talks about um, the salamanders. But does it talk about the one time the Emperor used his powers to flip a navigator off in the in the warp? No, we're not going to go over that again. Anyway. <laughs> Such an abuse of power. Those poor souls. Yes, I know. And they're just in the warp. Oh. Mac, I need to tell you something if you don't already know about it. What is it? Uh, So you know how Zinch has a infinite uh, labyrinth that can... That he basically uses to test his uh, demons or whatever. Yeah. Appar apparently, the only one to ever solve it was a little girl with a black dog. Huh. I wish I wish I was kidding. Yes. So Zinch, ha Zinch has an infinite labyrinth that uh, is constantly changing, and no one has ever solved it. The only one to ever do it was a young girl with a black dog, and to this day, no one knows who the hell she was. And Zinch was so pissed, he literally turned his guardian, like the gate guardian, and uh -huh. threw and like kind of took away his rank. And uh -huh. a lot of people are like, "That's a reference to the Wizard of Oz." And uh -oh. it's just like, "Yeah, it is," but oh at the same God. time, it's canon. It's canon, so Dorothy by the way. From Wizard of Oz sol solved his maze, and now he's pissed about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, he's pissed about it because even he didn't know who the hell she was, and the fact that some random girl solved it and there's like a bunch of theories about it but the main inspiration is literally the wizard of oz yeah zeech is pissed whenever someone <laughs> solves his little thing yeah uh, it's really funny yeah What's this? yeah the mock turn the moon of prometheus the salamanders fable they're here look at them so salamander and so majestic oh yeah Oh, do you remember what the Ultramarines were told to do? <laughs> okay, I don't remember exactly. I just remember at one point they were told to do a dance-off with some Harlequins. Okay, so they were told to go find the other artifacts of uh, Vulcan, but to not let the Salamanders know about it and be sneaky. So just basically drop it on them and leave. Are you kidding me? <laughs> They're, they're out stealthing the Raven Guard all of a sudden. Okay, that made sense for the timeline. But yeah, they're basically getting all the artifacts of Vulcan to uh, Nocturne to the... <laughs> so that we can get back freaking Vulcan, I assume. <laughs> and like I said, it's really quiet today. Yes? Oh, it's oh Heast down. God. He's sleeping on Anvil on fire. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Is his voice even more high pitched? I think so, yeah. Oh. Who is it? Who is it, Fable? It's Vulcan, of course. Yes. Fable? Congratulations, my friends. Through the power of friendship, you have found all the artifacts. And now I have returned to bring peace and friendship to the entire Imperium. No matter what the voices in my head say. <laughs> A weak Vulcan. Do you know who that is? Uh-oh, who the hell is that? Come on, tell me, who do you think the flesh is weak? <sighs> oh my god, it's him. Yes, it's him. Who is it, Fable? 
I can't. I'm pretty sure I'm going to mispronounce his name. Is it Ferris Manus? Yes, it's the ghost of Ferris Manus. It's the ghost of Ferris Man- Manus' dis- dis- uh, decapitated dis- head. Pretty yes. much. <laughs> no. Uh, since you don't know this, Chrono, uh, during the Horus Heresy, Ferris Manus was the first Primarch to die, and he got his head lopped off. Oh, damn. Yes, he also is quoted... Okay, so he actually said... Uh, when he was talking to Vulcan, he said that his arms were tired because they had been fighting a orc wall. Vulcan jokingly said, yes, the flesh is weak, but essentially the, um, but deeds will preserve on. Or something like that. I don't yeah. remember the exact quotation. But deeds will live on. Yeah, but deeds will live on. And from there on, his, like, Vul- sorry, not Vulcan's, first uh, man is his legion. Literally, they take, they took that to heart, that the flesh is weak. To the point where they're literally turning themselves more and more robotic. They they butchered and turned that phrase into something that's not even the right words anymore. Pretty much. They 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 sadly took it to heart when it wasn't even their father who said that. It was literally a jest between two Primarchs. And then they took away the actual meaning of it and thought, Oh damn, our dad said the flesh is weak. That's why he died, because he wasn't a freaking robot. We need to become mm. robots now. Pretty much. The Iron Hands Legion is uh, kind of silly, and Ferris Manus actually wanted to stop them from becoming robots, but he died before he could do that. Yeah. Shut your nut oh, face, okay. Brain Ghost Ferris. You are not friend. And yes, this is Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamanders, who is one of the nicest and biggest guys who cannot die. Quite literally. Every time he dies, he regenerates back to full. Yes, because uh, Vulcan is a perpetual, actually, which is... Perpetuals are all different in terms of power scaling, but let's not get into that because GW refuses to do anything that makes sense. But when a perpetual dies, they come back. It really depends on the timeline, but also on the writer, but usually it takes a couple years. Vulcan, on the other hand, is just like, oh, hey, I was killed like 47 times by my brother because he wanted to torture me. It's totally hmm. okay. I'll, I'll beat the crap out of him soon. And he did. Yeah, per- he uh, really basically, did. Uh, Conrad Curse put him through a death maze to try and break him like morally and mentally. Eventually, he got to the end where he said, oh, th- yes, there's a tell." There's a teleporter thing on this hammer right here, your old hammer. And then uh, Corvus Korak, uh, Conrad Curse appeared before him and said, Ha, huh, but I have a anti-teleportation field around this place. Then then Vulcan took the hammer and said, It's still a hammer, and started to beat the shit out of him with it. Yeah, he said, and to quote, like Matt said, one of his most famous lines is like, Yes, but it is a hammer. And he, like you said, he proceeded to beat the shit out of his torturer. And uh, people quote that every time they talk about Vulcan, because it's like the funniest thing ever. I believe he hmm. also threw uh, Conrad Curse into the, you know, anti-teleportation field to disable it. Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Basically think of someone getting knocked into an electric fence. Yeah. He really beat the crap out of him with a hammer and then threw him into a, into a thingy. Yeah, pretty much. They would be very happy to have Vulcan back because the Salamanders are just the nicest guy. Like, I'm not even kidding. They, like, are people that are still attached to their families and literally believe that they should protect everyone. Well, that's the thing I you like about them because from a standpoint like they're the most grounded in human and human of the space marines because they actually know what they're fighting for what it means to be them while a lot of the other legions sorry chapters specifically say oh you're a space marine now forget the fact that you had a family you're nothing more than a tool which is kind of like what makes them so inhuman to a lot of people because they yeah. forgot that they started off as humans and they had a reason to fight for something. Yeah. Also, yeah. did I ever tell you what happened when the chapter master of the Salamanders uh, had to deal with the Marines Malevolence leader? Uh, did I ever tell you guys that? You told me that. And uh, I saw short about it too. Basically, the Marines Malevolence are one of the chapters out of all chapters that just 
hate seem to hate humans in general. Like they were tasked with defending basically a military hospital, you know, basically soldiers that had just come off the battlefield and whatnot. When the orcs mm-hmm. started getting near, they bombed the entire area and saw the wounded soldiers as saying that they were too weak to survive. So, uh, the chapter master of the salamanders, Tushon, if I remember correctly, uh, basically came up to him and said, he basically dropped his hammer on his table and as the uh, Marine's Malevolence uh, captain was taking off his gloves, he said, you're going to want to put those back on. And by the way, don't bother reaching for a weapon. Yeah, he pretty much just threatened him, and I'm pretty sure if he wanted to, he could have taken out that whole miniature squad oh, of oh. Uh, Marines. Oh, he beat the he... shit out of him. No, I know, but I just think it's funny because I'm pretty sure that if his guard tried to do anything, they would have been taken out instantly as well. Yeah. Without, like, a second thought, because chapter masters aren't something to fuck with, in all honesty. Yeah, uh, especially... The Salamanders might be nice guys, but they're not pushovers. Hello, my lord. Good. My sentient newspaper has arrived. <laughs> sentient newspaper. Um, he is. I've lost track of him. You lost track of a 12 foot tall demon man as bright red as a dying star. Oh my that God. is truly a great achievement. I know where he is, however. He is busy writing up the first volume of my soon to be smash hit book, The Emperor's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh my God. Like my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried you'd be off sacrificing children or something. Yeah, I've been lying. <laughs> just received the message from the Ultramarines. Let me guess. They actually managed to do it. They found the missing yeah. artifacts of Vulcan. Yes. That is thoroughly inconceivable. So the relics that the Salamanders have been trying to track down for millennia were found by the Ultramarines in less than a year. Less than a year? God damn! Great, my lord. They are pretty great. Almost too great? Actually, not almost, just forthright ridiculously great. Yeah. I mean, seriously. What exactly makes those baby blue ball busters greater than the Gecko Men at being space marines? The Gecko Men. Well, I'm honestly not sure. I do have a few theories though. One is that the Ultramarines are simply more versatile. As I don't believe that for a second. Techniques, they're skilled at using a wide variety of weaponry and tactics. While the Salamanders are just about as focused on Pyromania as the Sisters of Battle are. I mean, Hold that's up. still really good. I must have forgotten, in my infinite wisdom, about some religious order during the Purge of Terra. These sisters of battle yo speak of strike me as not being full of muscle bound battle buddies with exclusively floppy reproductive. Oh organs. boy, here we go. What precisely are these sisters? Well, do you remember the lady called Alicia Dominica? Oh. The one I brought in here to stop Go Chandra. But yeah, they're basically super powered nuns and can be really cool because for some reason, through the power of faith, they can lift and use weapons they should have no right in being able to use. Like a heavy bolter, which usually takes a uh, space marine two hands to fire. Yeah, however, I do, as cool as the Sisters of Battle are, they are religious zealots to the point where they literally believe in martyrdom. That is true. And then it gives them, and it gives them miracles. It's cool that it is a, it is a basically army based of super powered ladies, which is great in every sense of the word. It's just that they're so. It's just that their martyrdom and their zealotry does kind of outweigh the coolness for certain individuals. And for some, yes. But I will also say that they are a bit more human in their approaches and do care about the guardsmen and take care of them, as you know. Yeah, but it also depends on what order of the sisters of battle we're talking about. Because some True. tend to be more zealot than the rest, and there is one order that I believe. Special uh, specializes in healing more than anything, so they yeah. take care of the guard more than anything. While others believe in full on capture, destroy Xenos, things like that. It, it's it's pretty much like every other order in this stupid universe. So basically, they're like their own space marine chapters, in a way. Yeah, yeah, because there's like the order of the uh, white rose. That that's how they kind of split themselves apart because they each believe in a different saint. Yeah. Like, they that. each believe in a different saint, so they kind of do their own thing. Some believe in helping mankind, others are like, we wish to destroy every demon in existence. And some are like, oh, I kind of think they're a bit like the Inquisition, where they're like, oh, we found a traitor, we must 
sadly torture them until every pos until we get every information we can. Pretty much. Kind of like that. It, it varies from different one, but the ones yeah. that they're I will say but, that they're just about as grim dark as everything else. Yeah, but again, like Matt said, they do tend to be more human compared to the Space Marines because they actually do wish to help humanity. It's just various levels of help is the problem. Yes. There's a quote unquote help. My non existent genitalia are still trembling yeah. in uncertainty. Essentially, oh my it's an organization of people like her. Oh my lord. They're the military arm of the Adeptus Sororitas, which yes. you yourself talked about during the latest answer session. You know, the ones you sent out your erogenous pin ups to. Oh, yes, oh yeah, them. the pin ups. That scarcely sounds so grievous after all. Seeing as they eliminated that person with the most evil sounding name I have ever heard, oh, yeah. I am most certain they are sensible and rational people. <laughs> <laughs> I just hear, yes, so as dark. soon as he said that, I knew Fable was going to let out the biggest sigh. Words. Perhaps I can it's use so them for instructive purposes. If someone would try to prank call me in the future for unspecified reasons, what? I will be most happy to hear about them later. Back to the topic. Any other ideas about why the Ultra Microonis are doing the heavier work? Well, my Ultra second theory, while it may be subjective, is that I'm fairly sure blue is generally a better color than green. That is a complete and utter lie. Green, so there green is, is actually the a. This actually a really really stupid fan theory. The reason I say stupid because it ties into the Ord's belief that uh, blue is the color of victory and of luck. So. A lot of fans think that the reason the Ultramarines are so good at everything is because the Orc Wa gives them that. But because the people don't want to have fun, they're like, that's stupid. That's not allowed. It's just like, just let them have fun. We know that's not the case, but come on, guys. Just let people have their memes. I'll let them have their memes, but you gotta agree that green is the bestest color. It's a nice color, yes. It is the bestest you know color. You know how Orcs lose most of the time? Maybe there is a connection. First off, that is fucking stupid. The <laughs> fact that gold exists makes every other color equally inferior. Secondly, uh, before you go on complaining about the salamander's scheme, you should see their original oh, paint Oh yeah, job. this. Did oh. something sneak over the It did not fly well with the Mechanicus because of how many seizures the paint job prompted, so they went fuck it and slapped a plain coat of green Honestly, over that's basically what the Marines' malevolence colors are, black and yellow. Instead. Yeah, however, a lot of uh, paint color schemes of like chapters and homebrew chapters tend to be a bit more simplified because, from what I understand, especially if you're like a new beginner to painting models, it's best to start off like with one or two colors, but don't try any kind of crazy patterns until you get more yeah. experience. Don't overdo oh, it, basically. The salamanders generally make your regular yeah. civilians and whatnot more worried because they are all black. What? Their skin color is black, my lord. They look very unnatural and quite frightening. Oh dear. That statement would be so damn hysterical if it did not make me cry tears of pure disappointment from my skull. What do you mean, my lord? Yo, and by extension most likely the rest of the Imperium, have gone back to the ideals of ancient times, when people bounced around and inanely judged each other's characters solely oh, upon boy. the hue of their epidermis. What? What? This is exactly why regular humans cannot be left unchecked for a single fucking second before they start blaming and be lamming each other. I keep on trying to make humanity function on its own, but it just will not stop. Oh my lord, I think Actually, you... I am going to act like a brain oh dead dear. fucking mortal now too. Oh boy, I have not seen what sort of coloration you have underneath that golden mirror you call a suit of armor in over 10,000 years. Oh Let no, me see what kind what of pigment your happen? corporeal container has, and I will I figure it no for acid really salt all over it. Wait, I am so confused, my lord. Why are your eyes lighting up in the same pattern? Go up and wait, what the heck are you doing now? But yeah, it seems to be that the gene seed of, uh, basically the Primarchs kind of, uh, messes with your skin color as well like the raven guard become pale as all hell and look like a rock me like a edgy rock metal band yeah you look emo as hell basically you gain the same the you gain the same looks as your primark more or less actually the reason there is kind of a quote unquote in lore reason why the uh salamander's chap like salamander's chapter has such dark skin is because of the high levels of radiation on Nocturne. 
Oh. The uh, militant in their body is supposed it goes into overdrive to protect it from the high levels of radiation. That's why a lot of them have dark, uh, dark charcoal skin color. Oh. At least that's the lore reason. But a lot of people think it's just GW wanted everything to be different races and not. I mean, just all one specific race. I mean, there is the reason that the Crimson Fists are basically, you know, Mexican like. Yeah, you. I already showed you the Crimson Fists. Yeah, they are very, in fact, Mexican. Yes. Oh, uh, by the way, chat. By the way, anyone in YouTube, I can say that because I'm Mexican. So don't blame. Uh, don't come after me or or Mech, because I will throw hands. I am in no mood no more for your for your shenanigans. And I am Mexican oh my God. as well, so I also have the card. Wait. <laughs> so so what happened there? Was well, there a comment? Nothing. Uh, no, no, it's it was just, just the it's internet just, as just a whole. Case, is yeah. But we're oh, both okay. Mexican, yeah. so we're Makes fine sense. with it. Like quite literally, yeah. what, quite literally, the name of the of the chapter master of the Crimson Fist, I believe his name is Pedro. Yep. Oh, it's actually Pedro. I, I'm just saying that just in case, because technically some yeah. people will be will get yeah. offended or will yeah, make it bigger than it, it is. I'm like, like I, these are my people. I can say it. Yeah, it's just like no, you, you're not going to be offended for me. You're not going to be offended for them. If that bothers you, I'm sorry, yeah. but. Please. Please don't touch some grass. Like literally, I just be like, I'm sorry that your life sucks. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm one of those people. Like, don't be offended for me on term on matters of race because one thing I know about my family and most of us is that we're chill with most of the silly jokes. Yeah. Just so I don't to eat grass instead. Not... Eat grass <laughs> instead of touch grass. <laughs> Mori, that kills. <laughs> Mori, that kills people. Oh, it doesn't. Be a cow. I mean, I don't think our, I don't think we can digest grass, we honestly. Can't. But we can't. Kind of like corn, we can't properly digest that. So I yeah, mean, please don't add to me. This tastes like grass, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's green tea that tastes like grass. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, is I went back to this before I <laughs> I get confused. Oh look. What the fuck? Ow, my lord, was was that really necessary? You're black, but you are shit talking other blacks. I am confused. Black. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> fucking are. Have you <laughs> been in that shimmering shell of yours for so long <laughs> that you forgot you had something under it? Gold is not a skin color, <laughs> unfortunately. No, I <laughs> Unfortunately? Because you know he would definitely try. Okay, yeah, you're right. He would try. I don't know, just some standard skin color, not black Then what in the fuck are you talking about? Well, my lord, I mean, uh, you know, the salamanders all have a literally pitch black exterior with almost coal like skin texture and red glowing eyes. Yeah, they do. It's like they are bathing in burning promethium on a daily basis. They might what be. are you even on about, Goldilocks? I am honestly surprised you don't know about this, my lord. I'm certain the salamanders have always looked like that. Your memory must be distorted from all the smooth, lubricated skin you have consistently been exposed to for these past 10,000 years. Your mind has started fantasizing about big, exotic, crust covered men that come and take you away to the lands of a thousand <laughs> oh volcano cannons floating in your face. That might be true, but it doesn't make that argument. Like that might be true. Kid, no! <laughs> oh, don't <laughs> agree <laughs> with him! <laughs> yeah, but this is what the salamanders look like. It's usually a pale, <laughs> ashy, or coal skin with glowing red eyes. It's kind of, Yeah. By Jeez. That is new. Yeah, again, it's remember. because of the high radiation on Nocturne that made that apparently triggers one of their organs to go into overdrive. That's why they look Let's like that, me. apparently. Yeah. Is my mind playing tricks on me? Knowing the state of my memory, perhaps I did forget. Now I just feel like some kind of huge dick. I feel like your heart is in the right place, but you can't be blamed for your degraded memory of things. Yes, that is correct. Oh my god. As you know, I am always in the right. So, uh, can I have my armor oh. back? I fear the other custodians will come and lubricate my revealed body parts. And start patting my chest like muscular bongos and... You are such a fragile little butterflower, aren't you? <laughs> Butterflower. So, please enlighten me. What in the shaticular showboat actually happened to the salamanders to make them look like this? 
I am uh, positive at least Vulcan had flesh similar to yours. As bad yeah, as my memory does. is, I should be right about that. I don't that remember Vulcan having glowing I mean, red eyes. I am his fucking father, after all. And then certain all salamanders, including Vulcan, have always looked like that, my lord. I am murderously sure I gave all my children natural human pigments. Why would I ever decide to treat one of my infant sons to a bath in a pit of flaming tar? I am unsure yeah. Magnus and Korok have natural pigments. Shut up, Magnus. <laughs> Hell yeah, because Magnus has always been red as hell, and Chorus is the palest m motherfucker in the room. Well, Actually, Mortarion is also pale as hell when you look at him. Oh yeah, but you usually never see Mortarion without his giant hood and his, like, gas mask. Yeah, that's Explain. true. Well, uh, I believe their pigment was actually affected over time by the whole world of Nocta. Their genes heat as a chemical reaction to the radiation upon the planet, which inherently turns all yeah. salamanders jet black, also shifting their eyes to a fiery red. No, that is just fucking <laughs> stupid. Why would the one chapter that happened to have people of black well, pigment as a majority end up turning into vituperative fucking caricatures of their past selves? Yeah. Must be that shit's quid cinch again. It's and possible. Now to get the blood angels Cupid wings and the space wolves the wrinkly faces of pans, all according to my ever growing scheme. Uh, <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified, is what that just said. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, the blood angels, as far as I know, don't actually have wings like their Primarch Sanguinius. They, uh, no, they just have jetpacks. Yeah, they just have, like, pretend wings that they basically model their jetpacks to look like golden wings. I have to ask, do their appearance really matter if they are still loyal and excel as a chapter? Yes. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean. Oh. Screw this quandary with a fucking he got hit by the Let us just quest. talk about whatever we were discussing before this shitstorm started flailing about the room. Fair enough, my lord. As I was about to say, another difference between the Ultramarines and the Salamanders are that, while the Salamanders follow the Codex Astartes, they also follow a set of their own doctrines exclusive to the chapter. Oh, brilliant. More oh, rules boy. I have not been told about. First off, the Salamanders are very self-reliant and individual for being a Yeah, that makes sense. Each Salamander is taught how to repair and improve his own wardrobe. Yeah, because they're mostly smiths. No pun intended. Thanks to this, the Salamanders have a lot of mastercraft weaponry and armor in comparison to other Astartes chapters. This is a useful trait when combined with their latent pyromania. T O E S T Y Y Y. Toasty. Speaking of which, just to establish their tactics. Oh my god, they did so sound of that too. Oh wait, yeah, it did! I didn't even realize that! Yeah, they did the sound of that. Oh my god. It's amazing. One well, year ago, the Salamanders decided to fill an entire city with Promethean to destroy a dwarf invasion. The good news is that it worked. The fire even eradicated all orc spores, so the chance sense. of a horde re 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 The bad news is, well, they lit a city on fire. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty normal okay. for Salamanders. Also, in the case of super heavy vehicles, they primarily tend to use the Land Ray Redeemer, which is basically two gargantuan flamers in the shape of a tank. Yeah. As great as that sounds. It also sounds incredibly unconventional. Not to mention, they also literally wear fire on their armor. Yes, they do. Out. Are you earnest in this claim? For fuck's sake, do they have a who can stay on fire the longest contest as well? Or what? Well, uh... maybe not that. But an ancient ritual amongst the Salamanders is that when one of their battle brothers grows too old, is dishonored, or is crippled and unable to fight, they will undergo a ceremony which involves them walking out into the fiery desert to meet their death in flames. What the fuck? What? Another one of their customs is that when a salamander actually dies, their body will be cremated in ritualistic fashion in the flames of a giant volcano called Mount Deathfire. Death is the Death space Fire. Base marine chapter or a death metal band? If they do not manage, uh, death metal bands have a lot of crazy names. I don't remember the name. There was a, sl I forget the name. That was just a silly name for a death metal band. It was like Death's Head or something. To get the fallen Astartes back from Nocturn to be cremated, his battle brothers perform a local cremation ritual in which they light the seas on fire and then all stick their arms into the flames. Now I am starting yeah. to feel uncomfortable. But when a captain of the Salamanders dies, there we go. a grand ceremony is initiated when they strap the dead captain to a giant slab of ceramite coated marble. Two battle brothers dressed in simple robes then proceed to lower the slab and the captain into a pool of lava. The battle brothers chosen to do this have their own hands scalded with white hot chains that suspended the slab as they lowered it down. 
They have to do oh, it in boy. perfect unison, as the chains have engraved the Salaman's iconography, making the Battle oh, yes. Brothers' hands a permanent third degree birth with the semblance of a hammer, an anvil, and a flame upon their hearts. Now That's this is right. just becoming fetishistic. With the death of a captain, a new one has to ascend to the ranks, of course. In the ritual of ascension, they take the soon to be captain and strip him down to only his sash. Oh, yeah. He is branded with a mark Can you tell they like fire, Chrono? Captainship. Then he is placed upon a platform in his unrigged splendor. And is subject to an extreme pillar like inferno. Yeah, I can tell. Surrounds him for a few seconds. Oh, yeah, ran to the the rest room. concluded with the words Vulcan's fire burns in my breast. With it, I shall smite the foes of the Emperor. They are taking that passage pretty damn literally, it seems. Yeah. Seriously, is this troubling craving for flames a side effect of me placing them a bit too close to some candles when they were just little gene seeds in a tube? Why do so many of my sons have such revolting compulsions? Oh my lord, it's not your fault. That's that is definitely that. correct. <laughs> I never do anything wrong saying? ever. Compared to a lot of what the, uh, compared to uh, what a lot of some of the successor chapters do, the salamanders just do something real, uh, just do something relatively normal. Some of the space marine chapters actually uh, fall into cannibalism. One of them I can think of off the top of my head. The one you, the chapter you hate because of what they did to the lamenters. Yeah, the morificators who eat bodies yeah. and then wear the bones. Yeah, there's also the fact that I, I've talked about this to you before, but the Carterodons have something known as the Red Tiding, which they go to a planet completely, and uh, they completely destroy. Everyone. The, yeah, they completely destroy the guards, everything, kidnap everyone, make sure that they leave no sense of trace whatsoever. So. Say if they use like a bunch of bullets, they literally clean it up because they don't want anyone to know it was there. This basically looks like a ghost. The entire plant will just look like a ghost town afterwards. Yeah, oh. so I know anyway. it's a bit creepy and weird, but this is actually relatively normal compared to what a lot of the other chapters tend to get up to when you think about it. It's better than so what the other chapters do. They are a chapter that, despite their imposing looks, do an outstanding job caring for and protecting civilians, often acting as rearguard in several confrontations. True. That must go superbly for them, considering their specialization with such short-range weaponry. The population is always grateful for it. I One bet they are. Was that during the Second War of Armageddon, when all the chapters involved were waging war on all different fronts, oh, yeah, Sometimes this is what I told you about. The neglected task of handling supplies, escorting refugees, and helping the defenseless. In the battles upon the planet of Armageddon, the this is the one I told you about for as people, and generally yeah. frowned upon the notion that the populace of the Imperium were of no worth. These ideals yeah. are actually so strongly held by the Salamanders that their chapter master, Tushan, came blows with the first captain of a chapter known as the Marines Malevolent. The captain had early bombarded the refugee camp that had been ambushed by orcs, so he said that he didn't have time to waste on saving the civilians. This greatly angered Tushan and made the Marines Malevolent generally seem like total ass clowns. Yes, Those they Marines were. Malevolent seem to be suffering from GOG Evandire Syndrome. Seriously, who in their <laughs> right mind openly names their chapter Pretty Malevolent? Much. Nobody. The Marines Malevolent don't seem to have anything right about them. Uh, they're technically loyalists because the Inquisition is worried about what they would do if they ever turned traitor. But, uh, we don't. I don't even know who they're a successor chapter of. Even their color scheme seems uh, rather precious. Yeah. It is like they took the Salamander's previous color scheme and removed everything even remotely good about it. I will yeah. have to pencil in a virus bombing upon this abomination. <laughs> On a side note, it is also, a good thing I you like inserted the, this uh, in a visual. I like the Salamander's uh, war cry. It's literally in into the fires of uh, battle, onto the anvil of war. So yeah, they're very yeah. blacksmith heavy and yeah. very fire heavy as well. Basically, when uh, base when space marines meet their primarch, they gain a bunch of new traits usually by learning from them. And blacksmithing was one of Vulcan's main things. The funny thing is, apparently, when Vulcan was found, and when he was told what his chapter was doing, like his legion at the time. Mm -hmm. He was told that they were on a planet uh, fighting an orc war. When asked why they were still fighting it, it's because they were spending most of their time trying to make sure that they got rid, they got as many uh, evacuated civilians as possible. When Vulcan heard that, he's like, yep, those are definitely my sons, all right. <laughs> I kind of love so, that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Salamanders have always cared for humanity, even before they found their gene father. So 
when he found out that that's what they were like, he was proud of them because, yeah, that's essentially what he wanted them to be. Yeah. And I think Ben is right. He pretty much introduced blacksmithing to them while different chap different uh, primarchs did different things. Some destroyed their legions more than actually improved them. Some but that's for made, another day. Yeah, some yeah. made them worse, some made it better. Some legions were terrible and made better by their primarch, but we'll get onto that at some other point. Wiser into the golden throne. It makes exposition much easier. Agreed, my lord. Either way, I hope you do see how the Salamanders are still one of your finest in this regard. They stay true to their Primarch and you in both code and mannerisms. True. Yes, that is all absolutely fantastic, but there is just one problem. Pyrophilia, my lord? <laughs> Other than that, at the beginning of this conversation, I actually asked you to provide evidence that the Ultramarines are greater than the Salamanders. Now you have just set them up to be creepy but nice guys with a thing for helping people. I mean... And fire. Oh. That is um, kind of them in a nutshell. Well, uh... They found the artifacts before the salamanders? I want to say you are not proving a fucking thing, but I cannot say that without being wrong, <laughs> and I am of course never wrong as already established. Well, my lord, the Ultramarines will most likely live long, eventually fading into legend with their deeds and self-publicism. But the salamanders will continue to burn like a mighty flame in the hearts of the people they have defended. It is better to burn out than to fade away. Yes, indeed. That is a good point. That the salamanders are always remembered by the people they save. My lord. Yes, indeed. Uh, man, Seriously, I... though. What? I, I'm looking up the marines more relevant real quick. Uh -huh. Apparently, yeah, no... Apparently, even the wiki doesn't really have much, uh, much known about them. So we don't know who their gene father is or who their the successor chapter of is. All that is known about them is that it's theorized that they're from the thirty-second millennium, from the thirty-second founding, essentially. Okay. And their war cry is literally, "Hate is the surest weapon." This That's makes... literally all that's known about them. This makes me think they might be loyalist iron warriors or loyalist world eaters. Probably because, like, I'm looking at the wiki just trying to gauge about it. Um, all that's known about them is literally that they've gotten into scraps with different legions, uh, notably the Salamanders, and at times the Inquisition. So, yeah, it's they're just there. They just exist, and they're so not like. I guess people don't work with them for obvious reasons. Even the Inquisition, like you said, it's just like, I think we'd rather have them on our team, even though we don't want them. I wouldn't want them because... either way. Just send them on to, just get them on a penance crusade. Then we'll be fine. Yeah, that that's pretty much what the wiki's saying right now. <laughs> that's Next time I meet... Just have them take the mentor's place in the penance crusade and we'll be all good and fine. Vulcan, I am going to tell him to take his sons on a field trip to a freezing cold ice planet oh for a God. couple of years so they can reorient their fucking perspective. Life's not all fire and flames, am I right, my lord? No, especially oh. in the case of the mangy for balls. Oh, we're going over I the Billy man and his band of puppies are still. Oh, we're going over the wolf of Enrica. Next. <laughs> oh no, not the wolves. Chrono. Oh, I think. Yeah. He's... Are you ready to learn about the Space Wolves? Sure. What's the thing about trying to figure out how friction works? Actually, oh, yeah. you should tell me about their drunken tirades next. Ah, right, right. Oh, of course I No! Oh! You must not speak of the wolves. Who dares suddenly oh? interject things in my presence? Hmm. Oh look, it is my precious little century bubble. How is my sweetheart <laughs> doing today? Century bubble. Father, yeah. your sweetheart was I. Rogel Dog. Yes. Rogel Dog. Yes, that is Rogel Dog. Season 2 end. I love the fact that he was a centurion this whole time. It's amazing. But yeah, Chrono, that is one of the Emperor's other sons, Rogel Torn, who is known for... Oh, okay. Basically, the best way to describe his personality in, in two ways is that he is a very caring father figure who is a major builder, who also has the kind of the abilities of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, and he's very blunt. 
Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, the the cool thing about Gogo Dorn though is apparently he's so strong willed and so steadfast in his beliefs that he that him and his legion have a higher resistance to chaos because apparently during the uh Horus Heresy they didn't go after him because of how resistant he was to it, that chaos is just like, Alright, look, we're not even gonna try with you, man. You're just you're just too stubborn or something stupid like that. Pretty it's much. It's really funny yeah. and interesting. But yeah. <laughs> and now we're going over the Dark Angels over here. <sighs> oh no. Yes, it's the... I believe that's the chapter master of the Dark Angels. I forget his name. Like, Azazel or something. I think it's Ezreal. I don't remember. I think, I think it's Ezreal. My lord! What? Ah! Mm. Yes. What is it you want? You didn't hear anything, right? Not that we were talking about anything. We just like, we like snuggling up close, <laughs> whispering nice things into each other's ears. I know, Lord Israel. <laughs> is it the fortieth time you've told me that you've Um, uh, to, uh, to say why they're talking like that, Chrono, it's because, uh, mm -hmm. during the Horus Heresy, half of the Dark Angels turned traitor, and half of them didn't. So one of the things the uh. Dark Angels have been always hiding is that they've secretly been hunting down all the traitors that they call the Fallen. Yeah, the, the problem with that, though, is this. So imagine that they're on a mission to get rid of a uh, Chaos Cult or some other thing on a planet. The minute they hear anything about a traitor involved, they're like, all right, we're completely leaving this planet to die. We need to go after the traitor. It's like, oh, my God, you guys are so stupid right now. <laughs> Yeah, they do this all the time. They basically, they want to keep this a secret because they want to say, "Oh, we were always pure and loyal, totally." If it's, they believe if they're found out that some of them turn traitor, or that basically half of them turn traitor, the that the Imperium will not see them in the best light. Yeah, uh, it that it was so bad to the point where when Gilliman returned and was giving them Primaris uh, reinforcements, they're like, um. Is he coming after us because he knows about the Fallen? Should we attack him? Should we try to kill him? <laughs> they literally <laughs> thought that, and it's just like, dude, your your father, your uncle, essentially your uncle's coming here to give you reinforcements. What is wrong with you idiots? So yeah, they're, Stop. <laughs> they're super paranoid about everyone, basically. Yes, they are. Makes and sense. it's just, it's like, I get it. That's one of the biggest tragedies to happen to your Legion. But like, He's not here to reprimand you. He's literally here to help you. Just listen to what he says first before you literally try to kill a Primarch. <laughs> I wish to know we have pursued so the most mysterious lead you wished us to follow, and we've once again found the lost strike cruiser. Your feet have got Emperor's Emperor's Israel, did you hear that? Oh, that's one of the Watchers. There's some weird kind of alien that we don't know much about other than they like staying around the Dark Angels and can keep secrets. And can keep secrets. I oh, got. Yeah, let me just quickly explain uh, Watcher. They are their Xenos race that works closely with the, with the uh, Dark Angels. We don't know much about them because they refuse to answer any question about them. They apparently are a shadow in the warp. Demons are afraid of them, and they seen the future and they know how everything is going to end and how to make sure that happens. And Even all... to the fact where their planet had to be destroyed for that future to happen. Oh, okay. Which, and they all basically yeah. look like green hooded Jawas. Yeah, okay. and and the and they kind of follow the lion ever since he was resurrected, and even in the past. So when they talk to him, he knows better than to try to intimidate them because they will kill him if if he steps out of line. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh, um, Mac. Um. After we get done with reactions today, we probably won't be able to do uh, Chrono Trigger oh, this I'm week. Ah, uh, you guys are busy. Afterwards. It's alright. No, no problem. Well, I do. I do have to get to bed kind of early tonight because oh. I got to yep. early more. Yeah, and thing tomorrow. also okay. Mori's not feeling. Yeah, Mori's not feeling the greatest right now. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to keep you guys for so long. I did. Oh, yeah. uh, it's okay. I should have thought this more forward. Now. Oh, no, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> oh my god! Yes. Jesus. Ow. 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 
I, I really don't want to get that on my armor. It's all <laughs> murky, probably. That's stays so easily. Well, we, we do like spending time with you, though. Don't worry. No, no, it's fine. I understand. I just wish I had planned this out yeah. a bit better. Uh, oh, it's okay. But yeah, that's uh, that's Belial. That's not uh, Cipher in the background. That's Belial. Okay. The planet to which we've been led. That is all. Thank you. Dismissed. Oh, remember to close the door, but not too harshly. Yes, Lord Belial. I so will I... close the automatic door too harshly. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just sass mouth me? Brothers, <laughs> now. Did he just sass mouth me? Sure. I've stopped noticing that one of their inquisitors oh, are missing. Hey, that's uh, that's uh, what do you call it? Uh, I forgot what they're called. My brain's not working right now. Help. It's fine. We leave the corpse of that stupid inquisitor in a place where no one will find him. What? Picked up his small dried up bits, put it into small packages, and donated his food rations to the death corpse of Wait, what? Do those Creek fellows even eat? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> Time for this, Asmodai! Cypher and the Fallen are escaping further away from us the longer we linger! We have to- Excuse me, my lord. Ah, no, you heard nothing! I mean, yes, you heard something, but it was certainly nothing suspicious and secretly heretical. Damn it, what do you want? <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you again. But we have discovered sentient activity upon the planet's surface. What? No! I mean, yes! What is it? <laughs> it appears to be the Adeptus Mechanicus, my lords. Oh boy. The Adeptus Mechanicus arrived on the planet before us? Oh, this is such a shameful moment. I, I, I'm totally useless. Nobody loves me. <laughs> this can only mean one thing! One terrifying thing! Mechanicus By the way, that guy right there in the middle, Fable, that's Asmodyne, if you know who that is. I don't, but I remember his rank. He's a chaplain. He's a head... Freaking... Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a head torturer. Of course the freaking Dark Angels have a torturer. Of course they do. He's working for the Fallen! <laughs> <laughs> One of the fallen. Make him repent, Asmodeus. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why? That was basically the Dark Angels in a nutshell. So, two Primarchs have returned, Vulcan and Rogodorn, huh? Yeah. And the. Uh... Hello.